Dag here. Welcome back to TAS 100. To this episode, we'll be looking at the sequence generator puzzle over here. Um, I have a Reddit perfect solution for Sauk account, which I'll be saving up till last because it's it's more convoluted to make it fast. So I'll be starting um, with the instructions actually, since this is the most straightforward solution. So the current solution I got is is pretty close to the Reddit best, um, using a couple more uh, instructions and a couple more cycles. But it's 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 close enough to at least explain what it does and how to think about solving it. So what are we doing here in the sequence generator? So sequences are zero terminated. We read a value from in A and in B. So one value from here and one value from here. Then we write the lesser value to out. Then we write the greater value to out. And then we write a zero to end the sequence. So we get two numbers. Um, one of them can be higher than the other or they can be the same value. And we we'll basically have to sort it. So we look at both numbers, figure out which of the two is the, the lower one write that out, write the other one out, then write a zero to indicate that you know we're done sorting two, uh, two numbers. So uh, this is a potential way to look at it and that is it's becoming a standard trick of mine to take an input number, move it from up and, and move it to the accumulator and then emit it twice. So we store it, we send it down, and then we send it down again. And here we move the number down once to this node, and then here as well we store it in ACK and we emit it twice to the right. So why are we doing this? Because we have a two-step process, at least that's how I'm looking at it in uh, the solution. We have a two-step process, we have two numbers, and we don't know which one of is the greater. So step one is to figure out which of the numbers is greater, and then we actually have to omit the numbers. And one way to do it is what I'm doing here, and that is to use one version of the number to just figure out which is greater, and then take the raw numbers in the order that you want. Another possible solution could be to just omit the number once and use the backup so you do a, a safe swap to restore a number instead of emitting it or you do some reverse math so you sub it and then you add the number back again to emit it but that feels uh, like it would be more convoluted it might be in, in a very optimal solution it might be useful but for now this st uh, strategy works pretty fine so this node is the one that does all the work for us. And we start off by doing the compare. So we take the up number, we subtract the left number. So we end up in ACK with B, which is up, minus A, which is left. So think about this. If A is smaller than B, then we end up with a number that's greater than zero because let's say if b is 10 and a is 5, 5 is smaller than 10. So if we subtract 5 from 10, we end up with 5 because it's a greater num uh, it we uh, subtract a smaller number. So the the number is going to be greater than 0. If a would be greater than b, so let's say b is 5 and a is 10, then you take 5 minus 10 and then end up with negative 5. So then you know that a is greater. So that's exactly what we're using here. So we jump if the value in ACK, so the result of the subtraction, is less than zero. In that case we jump to a label that I've conveniently called a is greater. So that's over here. And then we just move the numbers through in order that we want. So we take the number from up, which is b, that's the small number, and then we take the number from left, and we both send them down. And then we fall over, because remember, a label technically doesn't exist, it's just a convenience for ourselves. So it will, after that, emit a zero, because we end the sequence, 
and it will move on. Um, in reverse as well, let's say that B is greater, then we would not jump. And we automatically fall through to the section I've conveniently labeled B is greater. So then we take the value from left, because A is smaller than, and we send it down, and then we send the value from up down, and then we jump to label zero. So because we have to close the terminal, uh, close the, the sequence, and then we loop back to the start. So if we run this through really fast, we see this is a uh, 127, 127 cycle solution using five nodes and 17 instructions. It's slightly to the to the left. I think the most popular solution uses 18 instructions. So, and also if you look at the idle times, this node is doing all of the work. So in terms of optimization, if you want to do this in less cycles, we have to get work out of this node. Uh, and that is, is, is doable. I mean, it's doing the subtraction, it's piping data through, it's emitting, emitting a zero. It's, it's doing a lot of extra work that might not be necessarily what we want to do. So let's look at another solution. So we go up. So if you want to optimize for node count, then obviously we need these two nodes because this is connected to the input. We need this node because it's connected to the output. And the most optimal solution in terms of node count is to just add this one because that connects all the nodes that we actually need. So the main difference here is that rather than copying data down and sending it to the right, we actually accumulate data here, emit it twice, and have B pass the data through from left to down. And I've annotated this a bit to see what's happening where. So first the data for the comparison. We take the data that we've stored in the accumulator and we send it down. And then we pass the value from the left, we pass it down. And this is basically, it, it is more or less the same. Uh, we already have a, a double, em the data being emitted twice down and then we append a zero here. So we use more instructions to get a slightly better cycle count. Um, and this is 128. So that's why this is probably your most popular solution, because this is what a lot of people start out with. Okay, now let's move on, and let's see, this one was, again, it was, was fairly close to the Reddit solution. I used two extra, si two extra instructions, ran 14 cycles longer. But in the end, optimizing, I, I think the one that we really want to optimize is the cycles. So let's uh, focus a bit on that. This... It seems seems similar in structure to the first one that I showed, the the five node solution, with the difference that we actually use two nodes on the side here. And we have some extra emitting down here. So what are we doing here? We actually send numbers all around. So we move the number from up and we move to the accumulator and then we send it to the right. And afterwards we send a number down, which we pipe to the right. So why are we sending it to the right? That's a very good question. Because here we store the, the input number in the accumulator and we also pass it to the right. That's interesting, isn't it? And that is because we are doing a subtraction here. That's right. What I said before, the, the middle node was doing a lot. It was doing really a lot. So it was doing the subtraction, it was doing the compare, and it was, a, a, a pen, it was passing data through down, and it was appending a zero. So if you look at the final node, you see that we have up down up down and emit a zero so the appending of the zero happens in the bottom node so that that's something that uh, got offloaded another thing that we could offload was subtracting of the numbers and that now happens here so we take 
we we store the number in a raw form and then we emit it to the right. So we have the real value emitted to the right and we move from the left and move it down and from the up we move it to the left. So after a few cycles we have the number, the B number, ready here that's so that the middle one can pick it up. And on the same way after we emit the number to the right we emit the number down as well so we have the raw value of A waiting on this one. So the middle node will have access to the raw values of A and B by itself already at the start. All it needs is the subtracted value which is what we do in the top node. So we take the value from the left and we subtract it from the value that's been accumulated. So the value in ACK is then uh, the subtracted value and that's why we emit it to the right before we do the subtraction. And then we send it down. And basically all it does is save one cycle. <laughs> or yeah, in, in the main loop. Because before the, the sub left would be the next line after this and then we need to compare and all we did was move it up and add a lot of extra instructions to make it work. But because this node was just being so busy that just even taking one single cycle out of the main loop, if you do that 15 times for uh, because there's 15 input values, that will actually move a solution of 100 cycles down to 85 cycles. Or in this case something that was probably closer to 101 or 102, move it closer to 87. So this is the solution that, uh, at least at this moment, is also in line with it, it, the same numbers as the best solution as reported on Reddit. So, I uh, did something interesting here as well in order to make things even better. Before we had the sub in here, and it was doing some uh, some extra work. Um, now all this does is it, it takes the number from up and then it does a compare. It does no longer subs, it, it no longer does extra work. So in this case if we end up in the loop that A is greater, then we just move the numbers. And then actually rather than doing a jump back to main, we inline it. Because remember, jump to main, it's a full cycle that basically doesn't contribute to getting you closer to the solution. B doesn't need a jump because it falls through. So it this all automatically has looping behavior so you don't waste a cycle when B is greater. But when A is greater you waste a cycle if you do a, do a, a regular jump. So if you have a very very small main you can actually inline it. So just copy the code and add it and then you do a compare and in this case the main function does a, a jump to b is greater if it's greater than zero so you wanna skip a well in this case the default behavior is already to fall through to b is greater so using the same test is rather pointless instead you want to capture the situation that you have here when A is greater. And as we figured out already, A is greater. Um, apparently A is greater when the value is less than zero. Yes, of course, because we take B minus A, and if A is greater, we end up with a negative number. So in that case, we jump back and we repeat the same cycles. And this is, is more uh, a more elegant solution than always doing the jump because this saves, assuming a perfect mix of A and B, it saves you about half a cycle per per input. So this shaves off about seven cycles. So currently we got 87. And if actually I, I can actually show you. So if we do it like this, we do a jump main and we run. And we jump back to 95 rather than 87. So that's an 8 extra cycle. So that's about half of the of the numbers. So let's restore my pre-solution. 
en double check and it's indeed 87 so that's probably more than you wanted to know about the sequence generator and yeah next episode I'll uh, continue with one of the other ones I still have a couple of the of the first ones the differenti differential converter for example that I still need to optimize for cycles um, signal comparator I don't have an optimal solution just yet and the same for the multiplexer that it's just just off by a little bit but I'll eventually get back to them but for now I figured I'll continue with just more solutions for other puzzles and you know so so you can learn and see how I did it and with that I thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this, please rate this a thumbs up. If you want to stay up to date, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. And with that, I wish you a pleasant day. Bye bye.